Let's create depth maps and use them in Affinity Photo. I shared a video a while ago on how to generate depth maps using a free online tool. However, this tool is no longer available. Here is an alternative. If you have Krita with Krita AI plugin, we can create them locally. For more information about the Krita AI plugin, check out the links in the description. With our images loaded in Krita, we can generate the depth map by adding a control layer in the Krita AI panel. Once we have added our control layer, let's select the depth type. Make sure the layer is selected from which you want to create a depth map. In my case, it will just be the background. To generate the depth map layer, from the selected layer, we can press this generate icon. If all goes well, we get a nice black and white depth map. I can press Ctrl or Command A to make a selection of the canvas and then press Ctrl or Command C to copy the depth map to the clipboard. Now I can switch to Affinity and create a new document from the clipboard, either by using the file menu or the Ctrl, Alt, Shift and keyboard shortcut. We now have our depth map in Affinity Photo. Let's switch back to Krita to copy the original. In Krita, I'll hide the depth map and select the image layer. As I still have the canvas area still selected, I can just use the copy to clipboard function again. This time, our image will be copied to the clipboard. Back in Affinity, I can press Ctrl or Command V keyboard shortcut to paste the image into our current document with the depth map. Let me quickly fix the alignment and move the image below the depth map. This depth map is ideal for masking. To use it as a mask, we can either right click on the depth map layer and use the rasterize to mask, which I will show later in the video. But the method I like is using the erase blend mode as this gives a bit more flexibility. By setting the blend mode of the depth map layer to erase, everything will be cleared. To have this layer act like a mask, we need to change its blend range. In the blend ranges dialog, I can lower the shadows, which filters out the foreground areas. Or I can lower the highlights, with as a result that the areas in the background will be filtered. Let's filter out the foreground areas. The cool part of using the blend range with the Erase Blend mode is that we can adjust the curve to control the strength. By moving the endpoint to the left, we filter out more of the foreground. Excellent! Let's add a curves adjustment to darken up the image. Because our depth map is in Erase Blend mode, the foreground is still filtered out. Let's move this as a child to the curve layer, so it will act as a mask for the curve layer. Beautiful! When I turn on and off the depth map we added as a child, notice how the curves adjustment mainly applies to the background. Pretty cool. To spice things up, let's add a contrast increasing macro from my recent macro pack. I just want this to be applied to the foreground. So what we can do is to duplicate the depth map layer and move it to the top of the layer stack. This time, instead of using the erase blend mode, I'm going to rasterize it as a mask. Before doing that, let's reset the blend range and change the blend mode back to normal. We got our original depth map back and to rasterize it to a mask, right click on the layers panel while the layer is selected and choose rasterize to mask. Once we do that, our image is immediately masked. I can now drag and drop this on the group icon of the contrast density group which was created by the macro. This way, the effect of the group is now masked only to the foreground. The effect is not particularly strong. Let's check the mask by alt-clicking on it. And as you can see, our subject is not quite white. This is why the effect is not very visible. When we use the Erase Blend Mode option, we were able to modify the strength by adjusting the blend range. To adjust the density or the strength of a mask, we need to add a curves adjustment to the mask. I'll add the Curves Adjustment and move it as a child to the mask. Now in the Curves Adjustment, we can switch to the Alpha channel. As you notice, by adjusting the Alpha curve, we can now control how the mask behaves. I'll move the top right node to the left. This will make the semi-transparent areas less transparent. Or thinking in black and white, it will make the grays more white, thus lowering the transparency of these areas. This looks about right. Notice the subtle differences when I turn this on and off. Pretty cool. 
By the way, if you have DaVinci Resolve Studio, you can also create depth maps, which even gives options to customize the depth map generation. In order to keep the original photo dimensions intact, the best way is to use the Fusion tab. Create a Fusion clip and get your image into Fusion. Now we can add a depth map node and link the media into the node. Let's press 2 on the keyboard to see the output of the depth map on the right viewer. As mentioned, we do have some customization options in the inspector panel. Once you're happy with your depth map, right click and choose Save Image. Select the PNG output format and save to disk. We can now use the saved file as before in Affinity Photo. Pretty cool. Depth maps are interesting to work with and check out my original video for more ideas. In this video, I just wanted to highlight how you can create them locally using Krita AI. Thanks again for tuning in. Smash the like button if you like this video and don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more Affinity and Resolve tutorials. Until the next video.